Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Christmas story, which was read to you a moment ago to the Gospel of St. Matthew. Something very different was started in 1967. In Pittsburgh, no less. In, in an unexpected place in Pittsburgh, not in Oakland with our fine, fine universities, not downtown in the government buildings. No, it was started in the Hill District. I know, even in the 1960s, the Hill District was a rough community. It's not where you expect things to happen. You're, this is not where anyone in Pittsburgh looks to to solve problems, much less a problem that vexes the whole world, and yet it was the Hill District. A bit about the problem first. The National Academy of Sciences wrote a white paper, and they figured this problem caused, in the United States alone, 50,000 deaths a year. It's a big problem. The problem was this. When you called for help for a medical emergency, who showed up at your house was either one of three people. Police officers, a man driving an ambulance, or the funeral director. That was it. And they would usually, if it was serious, not make it to the hospital, hence the funeral director. And so, they uh, had no training in first aid or trauma or anything. And that's just the way it was, that's the way it's going to be, and no one everyone knew the problem, but everyone's just like, oh, that's just the way it's going to be. Except three people in the Hill District, including a doctor, felt very different. Let's fix the problem, they said. So 25 people were originally trained, and these were kind of rough People themselves, I use the word rough, you know what I mean by that, right? All right. They, they received 300 hours of training in 32 weeks in things like CPR, defensive driving, advanced first aid. And they went out on their calls the first year, these new people called paramedics. They received these people 5,800 calls in the first year with only two vehicles. Imagine that. And they averaged 10 minutes between call and showing up. In that first year, they saved 200 lives. Year one. It's so interesting that when people have had enough of a problem, when they decide we're going to fix it no matter what, and when they do, such Few people can change the world. Paramedic work today is universal in this, the earth that we live in. 2,000 years ago, God saw a problem, a big problem, a real problem. People were dying in their sins. And nobody could save themselves, and nobody was there to save humanity. So God decided to get involved. How is he going to save us? How is he going to take us from darkness into light? So Jesus came in to the world. A baby in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, to be frank, is about as exciting and as expected as the savior of the world to come from as the Hill District producing something that would change the world. It was that backwater. It was that unimportant and the parents were that poor too. And the world would never be the same after that first Christmas. Nobody looking at that poor family thought much. But in year zero, as it were, God came. Jesus came to save us. And so we celebrate. We've been celebrating now for a lot of years the Christian church for 2,000 years. You all, for some of you, it's Christmas because you know it really started because you're in a church right now. It would feel almost 
like an arm was missing if you did not come on Christmas. This forgiveness that this child would give as he grew up to be a man is important enough that you came to hear, to celebrate, to sing. And just as like those new paramedics who save lives, Jesus now saves, saved, and will save millions upon millions upon millions of lives. Our life, he came to save. Where do we fall in on this Christmas story, you and I? We Christians, as it were, with God. I'm going to give you a little hint, and you might not be happy with it, but you're not the center of the Christmas story. Now, I know for the last month, everything that markets, so you buy something, has told you that you're the center of the universe, or your loved one who deserves the gift that you want to give them is the center of the universe. I understand it. I heard all the ads, too. I've been around. But really, we're not the center of the story. We're the... The shepherds were the angels, were the choir, as it were. There was an English duke that was eating dinner in London, and he was not happy with the service he was getting. And so he asked the waiter, do you know who I am? And the waiter looked at him and said this, no, sir, but I will inquire and inform you shortly. <laughs> Who are we? Well, we are sinful people, broken people, lost people, people who need a savior, people who need forgiveness, people who need God's love. We need Jesus. That's what we need in this story. And that first Christmas, that first gift still cannot be eclipsed. It's the son of God. It's your savior. God himself takes on flesh and has come. What reason to save us? That's a good gift. God is good at giving gifts. We do not deserve a savior, but then again, that's why it's a gift. It's not because you deserved it. It's because it's a gift given with nothing in expecting in exchange for it. It is what we would call in the church, you might have heard the word grace. It's a gift. So now if someone came to you and said like that, waiter, do you know who I am? We could say yes. We are a child of God, forgiven because of Jesus and receive all the free gifts that God gives his people. That's who you are. Why do you go to church on Christmas Eve or maybe tomorrow morning, Christmas Day? to celebrate the salvation that had come to earth to celebrate Jesus. It is calculated, and I checked a few times, and when I mean checked, I Googled. Uh, so if I'm wrong, please talk to Mr. Google about it. They estimate that 28.4 million rolls of uh, wrapping paper has been sold this year. 16 million package tags, 372.4 million cards, 30 million trees. I can't believe 30 million. Really? Scott, did you sell 30 million? <laughs> Not yet? Maybe one day. Interestingly enough, now, I know it's very cold, so it did affect the weather, but on an average Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, 51% of Americans still go to church. It's a pretty high number, actually. Pretty impressive number. Our gift is this, Jesus. Our Savior has come. God is with us. And of all the things and all the numbers and all of it, I guess it comes down to this. God is with us. Jesus has come. We're saved. He fixed our problem. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. <coughs>